Hi, welcome to your Excel Nerd. Uh, today I'm going to show you some basic functions. We're going to go over the SUMIF, COUNTIF, SUMIFs, and COUNTIFs formulas. We have a basic, basic set of data. It's made up of five fields or columns. We have order date, region, rep, item, and units. And what we want to do is SUMIF based on these two criteria. So if I change the name to Gil, you'll notice that my data changes. Also, if I change the name to, if I excuse me, if I change the item to pencil, you'll notice that these formulas change. So we're going to start with the basics. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. The summit formula looks at a criteria, looks at a criteria range, and then looks at a sum range. So for instance, if I go equals, SUMIF tab. I have my first argument in this formula hint. It's called range. And what range refers to is in which range does this name sit? And if we're looking at these, we have our rep right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that cell C3. I'm going to go Control Shift down. Uh, I'm going to use this F4 key, which is going to lock that range. We actually don't need it because we're not going to be dragging these cells, but just as good measure, I like to do that. I'm going to go comma criteria. Okay, so in the first argument in range, it's asking us which is the range we want us to base our sum off. In my criteria, it's going, okay, well, which items within that range do you want us to look at the adjacent column and sum those adjacent rows. And we're going to go Gill or this K2 cell. I'm going to press comma and this takes us to our third argument, sum range. We have units which is our only summable field in this set of data. I'm going to select E3, control shift down, F4 on that, close that up, and there you go. You hit enter and you have your sum if. So if I change Gil into Andrews, you'll notice that our formula changed. And if I change Jones, changes again. So that is a basic look at the sum if. Now let's do the count if. So what does count if do? Count if is a lot like sum if, but it's a little bit more simple. It does not necessarily have to take into account a range with values or numeric values. It can actually take in string values. So um, I can go equals C O N T I tab. It's going to give me count if. It only takes two arguments, so it's going to go range. Well, what's my range? It's this first range. If you highlight cell C3 and go Control Shift down, go ahead and press F4, and our criteria which is going to be this name. So we're looking at just the name here, K2. And I hit Enter, and it's going to give me 8. So this is basically telling me how many times do this, does this name, Jones, occur in this range? Well, 8 times. What if we change it to Howard? Howard only occurs twice, and if we look at our data, And I'm actually going to go ahead and filter this. Rather than selecting all, I'm just going to select Howard. And I bet there's only going to be two records. Yep, one, two. So I'm going to Control Z or Edit Undo. And that's how that works. So this is basically stating that if we're looking in this column for Howard, we'll only find two records. Great, so now sum if. What if we have to take in, uh, excuse me, sum ifs. What if we have to take in multiple criteria to sum? So one question you might ask is, I need to sum all of the units Jones sold that were binders. So how many units, how many binders did Jones sell? So if we change this to Jones and this to binders, let's see how we do this. So I'm going to go equals S-U-M-I-F-S, sum ifs, my sum range. So it only has one sum range. It's summing one range based on multiple criteria. 
E3 through E45 has been my sum range so far. Comma. What's my criteria range? Well, we have Jones right here. So that's our first criteria. So my criteria range 1 would be in this column C. Control shift down F4. Okay. So that solves the first two arguments. And what's interesting about some ifs is it can keep going and going and going. So as we go along, you can have multiple, multiple criteria. OK, so what is my criteria 1? It's going to be this K2 cell. Now we don't need to use a sum range because it only accepts one range to sum. So I just need a criteria range. I'm going to look at this D range, this item range. Control shift down, F4, and my criteria 2 is going to be binders. So again, what's this going to tell me is that what is the sum of all the binders in which Jones sold? According to this, Jones sold 124 units of binders. However, if I change this to pencil, he sold 130. I hope these units are large because if you only sold 130 pencils within this time frame, that would be pretty bad. Well, how many desks did did he sell? Looks like he sold zero. Yep, zero. Okay, so that's the sum ifs formula. How about the count ifs? Well, the count ifs, just like the sum ifs, takes into account more than one criteria and it can go up to as many as you want. So I can go equals count ifs tab to make it caps lock. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, so I have two basic units I can use. Uh, criteria range 1 and criteria 1. My criteria range 1 as before is the rep column. My criteria 1 is the K2 column. That gives me the same as this count if. I only put two criteria, I mean one criteria in. However, it allows me to add more. So my criteria range 2 would be this item column. And my criteria 2 would be this desk. So I accidentally put an extra parentheses in there. Okay, so obviously Jones did not sell many desks. Um, let's put something in that's more sellable. Binders. Well, we sold three sets of binders, and uh, or at least he has. There's three records in which Jones sold binders, and his he sold 124 units. So let's go off this criteria. Let's uh, go ahead and filter this. So if we go filter, let's go down to select all. Jones, I'm going to select him. And then I'm going to select binder. And you'll have three records, just like the count I've said. And if we sum this up, and you look down here and it auto sums it for you, it's 124. You'll see that the sum ifs criteria says 124. So uh, what else can we do with this? Well, let's move this down a little bit. Let's go ahead and add a date criteria. Let's see. Um, let's add a since date. So we have a series of dates to our left that are order dates. Since, how about since order date? And I'm going to go ahead and write justify that. And how about we format copy these? Okay, so since order date. As you can see, we have these order dates from 2010. If I copy and paste special values into there, thinks it's a number, so I can just short date that. We want to get all of the dates past this in our sum ifs and count ifs criteria. Well, how do we do that? Since it's since order date, not before order date, we're going to use a greater than sign. I don't need to change anything because I'm just adding a third criteria. I'm going to have a criteria range 2 is going to be from here to here. I'm going to go F4 on that. 
Again, our sum range is the same. And my criteria 3 is going to be, quote, greater than, quote, actually, let's put greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to, then I'm going to use ampersand, which is a join, greater than or equal to this date. Let's see if that worked. And yes, it did. What if I went 918-2010? Oh, it went way down, so it's working. Anyway, that is the basics of sum ifs and count ifs. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be putting more and more up just like these. Thanks.